Hey everyone, Jared Victor Kilo 3 Bravo Lima here, and today I want to talk about the SDR Play RSP line of receivers. But before I get into that, I just want to talk because you may have noticed that I've had some work done. Now, there was a few people out there on the internet who thought that I didn't like ICOM. So, I went down and I must say I didn't pay very much because I try and get my money to buy new what's it called again, RSP Duo, you'll hear me call it SDR Duo over and over again, but it is an RSP Duo. Um, so I didn't pay top dollar, and I must say I'm not entirely pleased with the results, but I think it should be pretty plainly, plainly uh, clear to see now that we love ICOM. Um, and once again, Tesla was right, we do love ICOM. So now that we've uh, addressed that controversy, um, let's talk about the, what we're here to talk about today, which is the SDR Play um, line of receivers. So, the SDR Play RSP2 has been my standby favorite, I guess, bit of test equipment in the shack. Now, a lot of people use, a lot of shortwave listeners use them as receivers. They rave about them. I've had so many people email me and say, hey, have you plugged that into your full-size antenna? Have a listen to it. Um, because I've seen my videos using it as a spectrum analyzer and a whole bunch of other things. But it makes a fantastic receiver too. So when the new one came out and it had dual, well, dual tuners or dual receivers that could receive on vastly different frequencies um, and it was phase coherent, I thought that's something we'd really love to play with. So Rat My Radio went ahead and obtained one of them. Now in this case, we're talking about the RSP Duo. Now I'm going to call it the SDR Duo in the upcoming video demonstrate software demonstration. I'm doing a screen capture. Um, you can sort of see in the background that I was publishing the video or have published the video. Um, well, I haven't published it yet, but I'm about to. And the reason I haven't unplugged it is it's actually still running. Now getting both, even on my big gigantic screen, getting both of the um, receiver windows to fit in a nice YouTube um, video size window was a bit of a challenge and I don't want to turn it off. So um, it is all unplugged in. This is the unit. I'll try and get it nice and close for your scrutiny. It's got a lovely metal chassis. It's got, got um, what have we got here? Tuner 2, 50 ohm input, SMA connector as usual. This one has the bias T you can turn on. It's off by default. That's basically a 4.8 volt um, DC float, if I'm correct. Um, 4.8 or thereabouts. So you can run a um, preamplifier upstream somewhere. That's off by default. Um, it's on, so that's just an important factor if you're going to use this as a bit of test equipment. Um, don't turn your bias T on. Uh, or you're going to put deep 5 volts essentially of DC in line with everything, which you probably don't want to do. Um, tuner 1 can be connected to either high Z, which is good for things like um, doublets, ladder line fed, that sort of thing, or you've got a 50 ohm input as well. These are standard features that you would have seen on the RSP2. Um, now, there was an RSP2 Pro which had the same, I believe, or similar metal case. Um, but I went for this one at the time, not knowing how much I was going to love it. Uh, if I took, had the time back, I would have gone the Pro. But this has been fantastic. And it does have metal shielding on the inside. So um, I really can't fault the RSP2. But this thing is something else. And I want to show you that. So I'm going to stop waffling. Um, and uh, I'm going to get to the screen capture portion of the video. There's a lot to see here. It's in 1080p. So please do maximize the window. And you'll see it all. Anyway, uh, stand by and I'll, you'll see me again soon. Okay, I'm back now. The um, SDR Play SDR Duo is all plugged in. Um, I've gone and arranged both instances of SDR Uno uh, so I can present them in a um, 1920 by 1080p resolution. On the left, you have the first instance that is running, or well, that's monitoring the 23 centimeter band. And on the right, you have the second instance, and that is monitoring or receiving the 40 meter band. I have transmitters um, here set up to transmit on both 23 centimeters and 40, uh, 40 meters, and that's what we'll be doing to test reception at the same time. Um, pretty hard to find locals on 23 centimeters, especially when you don't have any antennas. 
um, for that band, but we I do want to show that you can listen to vastly different um, bands at the same time with the SDR Play SDR Duo. And I think that's pretty cool. The fact that it's got two independent tuners, they can be... In this case, look, I'm not going to do the mouse, but 1.2 gigahertz. Let's just stay with that away from each other, and uh, it's all hunky dory. So, um, what I'm going to say is, at the moment, they're both both receivers are currently running. Um, as you can see, you've got your stop there. That means I've started it, and same with this one. Now, I've gone and optimized the displays to some degree to give you a well. This one, I'm up able to zoom in on a little more. Let's see. Nope, that's the maximum zoom at my current settings. And this one, uh, once again, the maximum zoom. As I said, I've sort of optimized them. And I've also optimized the receive bandwidth. So I'm going to be receiving 3 kilohertz uh, on 7 meters of SSB, uh, lower sideband. And on 23 centimeters, I'm going to be receiving FM um, at 15 kilohertz. So you can see the differences there. Anyway, enough of that. Let's get to the one last thing I want to show you that makes this really, really useful before we start the demonstration. And that is, if you go in your main control window here to Settings, Out, you can select which um, channel you want your output to come from from each instance. So I'm going to go with left for 23 centimeters. As, as I said, that's the left section of the video. And I'm going to go with right for um, 40 meters, which is the right section of the video. You have no idea how hard that is for me to explain because I don't know the difference between left and right. If you tell me to go left in a car, if you're giving me directions, there's a 50% chance I will actually follow it. You have to point for me. So a bit of a, a struggle, but we got there here at my radio. Okay, so let's get to it. Um, they are both running, they are both squelched at the moment. So firstly, we will introduce 23 centimeters. Give me one second. Hello, Hello. this, this is, is Jared, Jared. Victor, Victor Kilo, Kilo 3, 3 Bravo, Bravo Lima, Lima. Testing, testing the 23 the centimeter band reception of the SDR, SDR duo. duo. Now, now as I am literally, literally well, I don't know, two, two feet, feet or about, about uh, um, 70, 70 centimeters, centimeters away, away from, from the, receiver, the receiver, you can, you can see, see that, that I'm putting, putting out quite, quite a strong, strong signal. signal. Um, bear in mind, the AGC is not overloading, overloading so, so the, the attenuation is fine. Anyway, I'll stop with the 23 centimeter band. VK3 power, going to our tape. Alright, as you can see, it received 23 centimeters just fine. Now let's try the 40 meter band. This is Victor Kilo 3 Bravo Lima testing out the, and this is a bit hard with my own voice in the background, testing out the 40 meter band. Um, we are demoing the SDR Play, SDR Duo, and we're receiving two vastly different frequencies um, at the same time. The new SDR Play Duo has two tuners, which makes it possible. So I'm actually doing a test on both the 23 centimeter and the 40 meter band. Um, I have been monitoring my main transmitter to make sure I'm not interfering with anyone. So if you are hearing this at one watt, my apologies. Uh, stand by, thank you. This is VK3PL going QRT. All right, you can see that uh, it's more than capable of receiving my waffle um, on both bands. But the real question is, can it do it at the same time? And that's what we're all here for, right? So let's get to it. I'm going to turn the volume right down on my sound card and monitoring because I'm going to really stumble if I hear both my voices at two different frequencies and pitches and all that at the same time. So anyway, stand by. <coughs> This is Victor Kilo 3 Bravo Lima, transmitting on both 23 centimeters and 40 centimeters at the same time for the purposes of demoing the SDR Play Duo um, SDR receiver. We have one tuner on the left set to the 23 centimeter band. We have one tuner on the right set to the 40 meter band. Um, I'm not great at math, so let's just say that's 1.2 gigahertz of separation between the two, and they are receiving each other just fine. Um, 
Now, you will notice on the uh, left that the S meta is going off the charts. That's due to me being, me being very close uh, with the handheld that I'm transmitting on, but we're not over overloading the AGC, so there's no problem. And as for the 40 meter band, I am receiving on a vertical antenna that's outside and transmitting on a dipole. So um, at one watt, we're about uh, 30 dB over. Once again, not a problem and a beautiful clean signal there coming out of the IC7610. So um, I must thank uh, Ross of Strictly Ham for lending me his Kenwood uh, Tango Hotel 59 handheld for 23 centimetres because I didn't have any 23 centimetre gear and that would have made this test really, really hard. But uh, I don't think you can get much further away in frequencies than 1.2 gigahertz and I really do think it shows off the capabilities of the dual tuners in the SDR Play to receive two vastly different bands and to receive them well at the same time. As as I said, you have 23 centimetres in the left ear and 40 metres in the right ear. Um, I did start the video by playing them separately, so if you want to hear what they're like in isolation, um, go back in the video, but you're hearing, uh, I guess, in some form of stereo right now, uh, even though they're being transmitted in vastly different ways. The 23 centimetre transmission is on FM. Um, what's considered, I guess, wide FM these days at 15 kilohertz. The 40 meter transmission is on, well, once again, what's considered relatively wide SSB, SSB. it's LSB at 28 kilohertz bandwidth. So, uh, very different modes of modulation, um, or vastly different, I guess, vastly different frequencies, but with two tuners in front of a single ADC, the SDR Play Duo can do it all. So, very, very happy with the performance of this, and I'm going to stop waffling now. You've heard enough of my rubbish to, to make up your own mind, and uh, back to the rest of the video. Thanks for watching this section. This is VK3BL going QRT and off the air, and hopefully, no one heard any of that because. Well, I, it doesn't really matter. I suppose you're going to see it on YouTube, but you get the point. I'm just waffling and talking to myself. Uh, VK3BL going QRT. Okay, so there we go, guys. Courtesy of quite a bit of waffle from myself, we've demonstrated that the SDR Play um, SDR Duo can, in fact, receive two signals with different modulation techniques, um, you know, in, on vastly different frequencies and it can do it at the same time with quite strong signals um, and it can do it really really well so I think that's really cool and this is just the start of what the SDR Play Duo can do I mean you know the, these receivers um, you know each tuner it, there's talk that it's uh, phase coherent um, what that means I'll talk about it more in upcoming videos but it means a lot of cool things can be done with this hardware now if you were going to spend your money um, and you were thinking of, do I buy an RSP2, do I buy a 1A? Um, there's no wrong choice. If you've got a budget, buy the 1A, sure, not a problem. But if you can swing the ponies, get the SDR Duo. It really is worth the money, and it adds a lot of capability to your shack. I don't think there has been a device since um, the introduction of the... Um, PEP reading uh, SWR meter, or the SWR meter full stop, uh, that can make as much of an impact to the operation of the average ham shack as an SDR Play device. They are fantastic, be it the the um, original uh, SDR1 um, or the R sorry, RSP1 or the RSP2, um, um, etc, etc. And I just realised I've been calling this the SDR Duo the whole time. It's actually the RSP Duo. But uh, you'll forgive me because there's no way I'm recording this again. Um, <laughs> it was hard enough. And as I was transmitting live on air, uh, I don't really want to harass anyone else on the bands. But yeah, as I said, RSP1A, if you've got a budget, RSP um, Duo, absolutely fantastic. There is so much you can do with this device. I've re it's been one of the best things I've ever bought for my hand sh ham shack. And as you can see, even just receiving two different frequencies, say monitoring JT65 or Whisper, this thing really does it. So very, very happy. Hope you've enjoyed the demonstration and we'll catch you in the rest of the video. Okay, well, I hope you enjoyed that uh, part of the demonstration. Um, some people do tend to like the parts where you see the shack and see me for some odd reason and other people tend to like the computer screen so 
I tried to mash them both into the one video. Now, I want to say again, thank you to Ross um, from Strictly Ham Australia for lending me this Kenwood TH5923 centimetre handheld. Uh, couldn't have made the video without him. You literally, essentially, without spending huge buckets of money, cannot buy a 23 centimetre anything these days. So, uh, manufacturers, please make more 23 centimetre gear. We've got these lovely things called SDR um, Play RSPs that we want to listen to stuff on iBands on. So, please, please make some transmitters. Anyway, enough of that rant. Um, I'll leave you to it and um, hopefully you enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching. This is Jared, BK3, Bravo Lima. Go saying 73 for Red by Rodeo and going QRT.